we saw that far right leaders tended not to recognize Biden's victory or, or, or very late or just said that they were waiting for the results. So one of the question is how much do you think the, this election is a blow to European far right parties agenda? Um, as it seems to be for Bolsonaro, for example, in Brazil, uh, yet to be seen, of course. And um, I have one question from Fiedev, in particular with Turkey. Do you expect the results of the US presidential election will make a significant difference uh, to the countries led by populists like Turkey, for example, or of course Orban or in Poland? Or so that is actually what I was on a workshop on earlier today um, on that exact kind of question about what is the consequence of that um, for democratic erosion around the world for authoritarian leaders. Um, I think if anything, that's one of the biggest impacts. Um, it's not necessarily that Trump was encouraging them, let alone really supporting them. Um, he only had relatively close contacts to Kim Jong-un of all people. And then of course, like rumored close connections to Putin, mm -hmm. which remain relatively vague. Um, he has met with virtually no far right leader who isn't in power. I think Nigel Farage being pretty much the only exception. It took two and a half years before Orban could finally get an audition with, with Trump. Uh, he even replaced his, his ambassador <clears throat> in, uh, in DC to get there. So it's, this populist international doesn't exist. Like, there, is, there has been some support for far-right leaders by the ambassadors that he has appointed, most notably in Hungary, but also in Germany and in the Netherlands very much. But even that is minor. What it, Trump normalized the far-right by, by simply holding that position. When the, when the president of the US says something and, and a party in, in the Netherlands or in wherever it is, says something the same, it doesn't sound as outrageous because it is the leader of the free world or at least the president of one of the biggest democracies in the world who says it too, right? So how can that be radical? How can that be out there? I think that plays a role. But in the end, Italians vote on the basis of Italian uh, reasons and Dutch for Dutch reasons, German for German reasons. They don't vote for a party because the Americans decided to go there. What I did expect to have an impact, um, assuming that Biden would win a landslide, was that the media would move on and because they get bored by populism and they would say populism has died, populism is over. And that would have changed the discourse and, and the agenda of the upcoming elections, most notably in the Netherlands and Germany in 2021. Instead, there, there is no dominant narrative. In the US, it is in part, this is great, in part, the next Trump is going to be worse. Um, in Europe, a little bit more like, could this be the end? But they're not big statements. And so I think this effect is going to be short. In the Dutch election, Mark Rutte is going to win big, but Geert Wilders is going to be the second party and the far right together is going to do better than it ever did before. And there's a fair chance that that will just shift that narrative again. Okay.